welcome to another off-season edition of the Aces Loaded Podcast. On this episode, Zach interviews Doug Drabeck to find out what he expects to get from Reno this season. Stay tuned for more after this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Aces Loaded Podcast. Zach Bay Rudy with new Aces pitching coach Doug Drabeck, and this segment is gonna be called A Beer with Doug Drabeck. Sponsored <laughs> yes. by Hot Valley's Ace Ball Ale. Uh, Doug, cheers, man. It's uh, great to have you in the biggest yes. little city. That's a nice Thank you. That's a nice sound. Cheers. Yes, it is. Um, I've had a lot of beers with baseball guys. It's my first ever beer with a former Cy Young winner. <laughs> it tastes so. the same. It's the same. It's all the same. <laughs> but uh, 1990 Cy Young Award winner Doug Drabeck, and uh, and welcome to town. You were with Amarillo last year. Yes. How was that for you? Yeah, I mean it was good. Uh, uh, their stadium was built in 19, so it had one season under it. Obviously, going through 2020, but. Uh, it was good. I, the one good thing about it is it, it was higher altitude and the ball flew very, very well. The wind was always blowing out. So it, it, it took me a while, most of the season. All right, well, this is a good, uh, a good practice for the pitchers and for me, you know, for Reno, uh, because there, you know, there were some balls that no way should have gotten out that did. And I'm like, well, you know what? Y'all can cry about it, but it's going to be like that when you move up from here. So just get used to, you know, pitching and this kind of stuff. So, I mean, you were drafted in 1983. Does this like, does that feel like the dead ball era compared to <laughs> where we are now? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, I think back then, you know, some of the, the fields, yeah, they were, some of them weren't even stadiums, they were fields. Uh, they were just smaller. So you had to learn, you know, back then it was keep the ball down. Nowadays it's, you know, we can pitch up and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a definite uh, change. What's, what's one, and I know you, you, I saw you as a pitching coach in the Cal League, and that was like the OG Cal League, back when it was High Desert and Lancaster, yes, and you had those yes. tough stops, and Amarillo, and now Reno. But what's, what do you tell your guys? What do you try to impart about pitching it at, high altitudes or high heavy wind condition cities? Uh, I mean, it's so easy for a young guy to try to pitch away from his strengths and okay, the ball's flying out, I gotta do, you know, I can't do this or I can't do that. And those may be his strengths. So uh, I think what I kind of found out last year was trying to get their mind off that and just not accepting, but dealing with this is going to happen sometimes and just go on and move you know move from it and I, I for me that's just the best thing you could do when you get in those spots because the other team's got a pitch in it also so you just try to take the negativity away from the circumstance and uh, just worry about what you need to do you know i want to get your thoughts on this uh, i was in stockton for a number of years and we had a pitching coach that was one of your contemporaries craig lefferts mm -hmm. the lefties so good uh, and we were in lancaster one time and i just you know asked him the lancaster question about how you got your guys through it he goes you know one thing a lot of people don't realize is that when you're pitching in these conditions at least for me when i pitched a candlestick talking about craig lefferts he goes your balance point is thrown off at times because you have these swirling winds and that can be something that affects you, not just so much the flight of the ball, but even your balance point. Can you can you kind of relate to that? No, I can't. Uh, like he said, San Francisco was one spot and Wrigley was, you know, no, it Famous was either thing. going out or it's coming in. So, you know, you're on the bus going to the stadium and you're pitching that day and there you, you go straight to the flags when you're driving is like, okay, this is what I got to do. <laughs> but yeah, the one thing that uh, one of the veteran guys told me, he goes, think about it this way, when the wind's blowing out, makes your curveball better, makes your sinker better, makes your change up better. And so there again, yeah, they, they kind of put the positive spin on it and uh, uh, you know, that, that helped out. Then you didn't worry about, you know, changing things. You just went out and, you know, threw the pitch you wanted to throw. 
we're going to get into aces, potential aces players here in, in a little bit, but I, I just enjoy picking your brain about pitching philosophy and, and pitching today because I think so much has changed even from when I first started working in the game, let alone when I first started watching the game. But is it is it sustainable the way pitching is taught today at, at the youth level where you know you have big velo guys and those are the guys everybody talks about and you have guys that are conditioned to go maybe maybe three innings um, you know certainly not a 22 and 6 type record that, that you had at one point in your big league career where you're getting all these wins and decisions but is it sustainable the way pitching has been has been taught at the youth level today uh yeah it's 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 a definite now you know you still you don't have people tracking like your travel teams and stuff like that now there's articles and stuff to try to help coaches like guidelines to you know for health wise and stuff uh, and so I guess because you see some guys you know in high school where there's just they got that one guy yeah and they're using them as possible you still kind of see it in college where you got that one guy and, or you got a couple of guys and they're they're starting and then they were leaving and then you know so they're kind of getting overused. Um, I, I mean, this is, I mean, it's a few years old, the, the theory and stuff, but I think it's still too new to say, all right, this is gonna work, this isn't gonna work, or all right, it worked, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still, in a way, think that, uh, you know, sometimes for different individuals it's good, for others it doesn't matter. So, uh, but I, I do get the health reason, uh, especially at the young age. I mean, they're, you know, they may have something happen, not a big deal. As they get older, maybe that just kind of still lingers. And maybe, you know, earlier years, it prevented them from being something else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said, we'll, I, I think, give it, give it some more time and we'll see just how much it really, I guess, affects the way uh, you know you coach or you use guys or if not. What do you think about like the the advanced metrics today you know the spin rates and and everything that that's focused on from a modern standpoint is there is there something to, to be said about that? Yeah there is and you know being an old school guy uh, I'm an old school guy too. Yeah. I, so you know uh, Pitching during that era, and then actually, you know, the coaching up until however many years ago, you know, still didn't have it. And so, uh, you know, it took me a while. It's like, is this? I mean, we, you know, I'm so used to feel trying to teach yeah. a guy to have feel yeah. out there, and uh, so it it did take me a year or two to like fully digest it and and really buy into it some too, which was a big part for me. And, Cause I knew that, you know, I, I'm gonna need this stuff and they're gonna want me to use it. So buying into it. But now I see that it's, uh, it can be very helpful. And maybe in some spots, if you try to do everything it's telling you for a kid, it might put him in reverse. But I think it's good to, maybe showing you a kid that he can be successful doing something that he's not doing. And uh, where now he's able to see it, not just hear it from somebody, mm -hmm. see it with his own eyes, and it gets his trust built into it, and now it gives him a, a new weapon, whether it's pitching at the top of the zone or whether it's taking a curveball or a slider away because they're kind of doing the same thing where you're able to see which one's more effective. Uh, there again, that you're taking away something, but you're actually adding probably better control for them and stuff. So it does work. I think it, it works better if you, you find that one, maybe two things that, hey, this can help turn this kid around, then yeah, it's very useful. You're going to be uh, coaching for the first time at the AAA level. Um, tell us you, a couple of your memories as a player from AAA. <laughs> That was probably the worst pitching I've ever done in you my entire. You said that the hot stove. You yes. said that. Yes, uh, it, it was just bad. I mean, where were you, by yeah, the way? Wait, I was in Columbus, Ohio, okay. uh, Yankees AAA, and I was in big league camp. And I, I mean, I don't. It's not like I'm talking about myself, but I mm -hmm. had 
a great camp. Every day I was just excited being there. I mean, I do great and stuff, and then, so I was the last man cut on the last day. No big deal, that's cool. I was glad to get the chance and stuff. So I go to AAA, and oh my gosh, I was so bad. I was beaten <laughs> up so much, and uh, so I pitched five games. So I was 0-4 with, at that time it might have been around an 80 or A. My last game I pitched, I go eight innings, I give up one or no runs or something. And uh, so they call me in the office and they say, hey, you're going up. I'm like, I just started laughing. Because <laughs> they already played a trick on me early in the year that I was getting traded to team we're playing. So Clubby's packing your stuff up, you can just walk across. This is before field. the days of Twitter when you can get on yes, Twitter and yeah. be like, is this, is this guy BSing me? So I, you know, I laughed and said, no, you are. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And so, you know, there, I, I kind of learned that and I think Gil had mentioned it also too. It's, you know, it's what what they might need at the time or something like that. Mm -hmm. So a guy was getting sent down, and you know, having going through that spring training, I think helped kind of put my name somewhere at the top of the list. I I spent 14 years in the Cal League, and last year was my first year broadcasting a full season in AAA. And one thing that struck me um, from a, a pitching perspective was that strike three was harder to get here at this level. Like in the Cal League, a lot of times you pitcher, you get ahead 0-2, and, and it, it pretty much can be game over. But at this level, strike three is hard because you're, you're dealing with hitters that have seen the gamut. Yes. I mean, they've seen everything, big leagues, international. So strike three is a lot harder to get here. Oh, and I, I completely agree with that. You know, in double A, because I was there the last five years, you still you still get guys that get a lot of strikeouts, you know, and they some of their strikeouts are on pitches that these guys here in the big leagues aren't swinging at. And I'm not necessarily talking way outside, way up. I'm talking about you know that was close, and you're like, how can that guy not at least offer at it? Yeah. And it, it is. It's a. It's it, it's a lot different. Uh, just because you know they just have a better idea of the strike zone and they have a game plan going up there and they're looking for something and uh, you know their discipline is a lot better too. Tell us uh, a little bit about the guys that you coached at Amarillo and that was a, a big uh, I think talking point for a lot of the D-backs folks I know that came through at the end of last year was we have these these, these <clears throat> core pitchers in Amarillo that Doug's working with Tell us a little bit about them and, and what we might expect if we see them here in Reno. Okay. Well, the guys I started the season out with, some of them came up earlier, but it was kind of like that, you know, that that was kind of planned already. That, you know, they, mm -hmm. they just needed to get some innings in, get stuff under their belt, get going, and boom. Uh, and then towards the end, I got, uh, I got some young pitchers from uh, Hillsboro, high eight ball, and uh, live arms. Uh, uh, Ryan Nelson, uh, I'll, I'll pick three that just pop out at me. Ryan Nelson, uh, Dre Jamison, and Brandon Fott. Uh, you know, mid to upper 90s. Uh, and you, you say that there, there's so many guys that do that now anyway, mm -hmm. but good breaking balls and they do have good change ups. I think that's one thing they're going to have to show. Uh, that they're they're willing to throw that more than they do now, but uh, uh, some good mound presence, and uh, you know I I'm sure they're going to have a chance to to start here. Uh, if not, I'm sure we'll we'll see them probably early on. I was just talking to you about being in Reno with you. What was the last time you were in Reno? I know you filled in here uh, coaching a little bit. That let's see. I was short season A ball because we were still in Arizona. So that had to be uh, like 10, 13, 14, or 15, one of those years. Uh, and that's the last time. It's, uh, does it look any different to you? I mean, it's... Actually, no, not really. I mean... By the way, this is hilarious. You, give this, you might be able to hear the, the garage door rattling. We're in Bugsy's at the, <laughs> the bar right above the field. Uh, the wind is howling right now. So this is not a day to be out. Like, the flags are just going That's, crazy. Yeah, they there. are. Yeah, see, now, I, I don't like that. 
You wouldn't want, I wouldn't let my kids go out, out there. early yeah, That's, yeah. <laughs> to go see that. This looks like Annie M's coming and, and Uncle Henry and the exactly, Wizard yeah. about to yeah. take off over so, here. No, it looks the same, but yeah, I think I was here three or four days and it was basically stadium, walk to the hotel, walk to the stadium the next day. So I didn't get to venture out, but I'm looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, you're in, you're in for a treat. Uh, did you get to see Kyle pitch here when he was here? I... Kyle's his son. I and got to... You know. Did I see? He didn't pitch. I was able to come down here. Actually, he, I, I saw him go a bullpen. Okay, is what I got to see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I did. I did not get to actually see him pitch. Uh, I did. Uh, let's see where. Actually, I, with the D-backs only on TV, and then you know with Reno, I didn't uh, really get to see him. So. But you got to tell him he was going to the big leagues. I did. That was uh, one thing. I was in Mobile at the time in 16, and I think our season was starting the next day or two days after we got there. And uh, I get a call from Mike Bell telling me what's happened, but they didn't tell him yet. They let me do it. So that was, that was kind of cool. That That's was such nice. A, such a cool deal. Yeah. Um, tell us what you want people to, uh, to know about a Doug Drabeck coached pitcher. Like if, if there was a, a guy that's like, oh, this is a, this is a, a Doug Drabeck guy, like what, what traits do you want him to have when he takes them out? I think the, the one thing that I've always liked and I hope I did, but not emotionless, but not looking like you're getting caught up into all the action, whether it's good or bad showing that I want to beat you, but I, I like to see a grinder, a guy that maybe doesn't have his best stuff, but he's just sitting there and he may be falling behind, but he's getting outs and get a couple of guys on, he gets out of the inning. And uh, that's, that's the kind of guy I like because, you know, it's easy to pitch when you got all your stuff. No guarantee, but it's a lot easier. But that guy that you think he got him, he gets out of it. You think you got him again, he gets out of it. Now it's five innings, maybe six, and you're like, how was he still in the game? I like yeah. that. I like that. I like that too. That's that's kind of a bygone, a bygone it era. It is because of the, the big pitch counts and uh, things like that and the, you know, specialized bullpen and stuff like that. So uh, it kind of is, you know, grinding it out for three innings, try to get out of it usually means you're pretty close to your pitch count already at three innings. So that's that's probably more surviving than grinding. Um, lastly, the, the robot umpires. This is gonna be new for me. I, I'll tell you, I'll be really honest. I mean, at face value, I don't like it because I'm, you know, I'm an old school guy and I, I just think baseball has been this way for umpteen years. But in a, in a way, will this, Will this take some of the mental pressure off off of pitchers? Do you think because you're not going out there being like, man, this guy's been had a tough zone for me all night, and you know it basically is what it is. You right. go out there, you execute your pitches, and, and the you know the system says if it's a ball or a strike. Like, have you even thought about that dynamic yet? Not really. I, I think it was more of uh, uh, hoping that they don't change their game plan because you still got the reports on the hitter so you, you still have a plan against that hitter whether you know you got a <coughs> excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me electronic uh, zone or a human behind there you still got to do what you plan on doing uh, I think it might take away it's kind of hard to start blaming uh, a radar or uh, yeah. you know something like that where it was easy to blame the the umpire and say he's not giving me this, he's not giving me that. So like, oh my gosh, he gave me, you know, he gave me this much and stuff. So it, uh, you know, it takes that element away. But you know, in a way, it might, it might help where he he's not making a call. And hopefully, you know, and I'm still 50-50. Uh, you know, it's like, well, there's nobody to yell at for us. You know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're going to have to reel it a little it's, bit. Just... It's going to, yeah, you might have to go out and play like you're yelling at the <laughs> zone at home plate. Just go move make, the umpire, just, just, excuse me, yeah. back up and then start yelling at that zone and then walk off. That might be something good to give to the fans. I would love to see that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Doug, it was great to meet you, man. I'm looking forward Thank to this you. year. Thank you. Here. Here's to too. a great season. Thank you. It's Doug Drabeck. We're back after this on the Aces Loaded Podcast.
We hope you're as excited as we are that Doug is on our staff for this season. Remember, baseball is less than a month away from Greater Nevada Field as opening day is April 12th at 1.05 p.m. against Sacramento. Start making your plans to come out to the game, and remember, go Aces!